How's it going everyone? In this video, we're going to be talking about my top five tips to protect your AWS account. Now, these tips are going to be useful for those of you that are just getting started with AWS. And I think there's also going to be some benefits for those of you that may be a little bit more experienced, but maybe just never came across some of these tips, so you never knew about them. So let's just jump right into it. I want to start out with my first tip, which is to enable billing alerts. Now, billing alerts are a feature of AWS that allows you to get notified whenever your cost exceeds a certain threshold. Now, this doesn't just happen at the end of the month when your bill is created, but this happens in near real time as you're consuming resources. So, for example, a lot of services are billed by the hour or billed by the number of requests or a different kind of methodology. But using this feature, you'll be able to get a notification, whether that be an email, a text message, a page or other mechanisms to get notified whenever your bill or your amount owed exceeds a certain threshold. This is something that I highly recommend you do when you first start out with AWS, just to protect yourself from accidentally making some kind of change in your account that has some cost implications and you don't realize it till the end of the month. No one likes to get a surprise bill. In fact, there's a lot of people and I've heard a lot of horror stories of people just getting started with AWS, you know, going to create an RDS a multi AZ cluster, clicking some buttons in the console and ending up at the end of the month or after three months of a bill of several thousand dollars. So this is something that you really want to do so that you can be proactive, get notified of this and just generally avoid some unexpected costs from coming your way. Now, this is really, really easy to set up. It only takes a couple minutes, I'd say five to 10 minutes. Uh, you do need access to the root account in order to do it, um, but it's going to pay you dividends in the future and also protect yourself from any unexpected events later on. Now, my second tip kind of attached to that first point is to stop using the root account for your day to day. Now, the root account is the account that you get access to when you first sign up for AWS. And generally, you use your email uh, to sign in to the AWS console so that if you're signing in with your email, then you're signing in with your root account. Now your root account has some special privileges. There's certain things that you can only do with your root account uh, that you cannot do with any other user account, such as looking at your billing dashboard and things like that. However, what is I think the most important trait of the root account is the fact that it can basically muck with all of the infrastructure that exists in the account. It's kind of like the top level permission node and all the users that exist in the account are underneath it. So not only can that root account like interact with all the AWS resources, add things, remove things, delete things, do whatever it wants. It can also revoke the credentials and delete users or roles from your AWS account. So it can also impact other people. So really, you should not be using your root account for your day to day activities. I know I was guilty of this for a long time. One of you actually called me out on this and I went ahead and created my user account to stop doing this. Uh, and I highly suggest you all do the same. So to, to stop using the root account, it's a pretty straightforward process. All you need to do is just go and create a user and that user is going to have like a username that you specify. You're also going to specify a password. You can give it some very liberal administrative permissions so that you can basically do anything with your account. But the important note is that if anyone gains access to that user account, it's not a big deal. You can always just sign into your root account, revoke access, do whatever you need to do and clean things up to start from scratch. However, if someone gets access to your root account, you're kind of in trouble and you're going to need to file an AWS support ticket, which can take a little bit to get a response on. And who knows what the person is going to do in the meantime. So that's something you should really do pretty much from the get go of using AWS. Now, my third tip also along the lines of security is to enable multi-factor authentication or MFA for short. Now, AWS makes this really easy. There's a lot of options uh, where you can do this, but basically this all happens through the IAM section of the AWS console. You just go in there and you select which type of MFA you have to do. It just takes a couple minutes to set it up on your hardware device. Now, there's a lot of different methods for doing uh, MFA. There's like hardware devices that you can buy that are specifically for MFA, things called YubiKeys, for example. Uh, now, there's other options that are much, much easier, and this is actually what I use, which is the Google Authenticator app. Now, the Google Authenticator app is really simple to use. You just download it on your iPhone or your uh, Android device. And once you set it up and configure it against the user account, every time you log in, uh, I actually think there's a little bit of a, a cooldown, so you don't have to do it every time. But basically, when you log in, you're going to have to open up your app. 
uh, read out the code that's there and just input that into the prompt that's going to come as you sign into your account. This is a great way to add a second level of security against your account. I think most people know what MFA is and why it's beneficial. But, you know, if anyone ever gains access to your username and password, then, you know, they're not going to be able to sign in without your hardware device, which is your cell phone in this case. So when you create your, your user account as part of tip number two, just do this while you're at it. Probably take you less than 10 minutes and you'll thank me later. Now my next one, and this one is quite important actually, and this is to guard your access keys, both your access key and your secret access keys. So for those of you that may be a little bit newer to AWS, when you create a IAM user to basically log in and do stuff on AWS, you get access to an access key and a secret access key. You use these keys as part of your programmatic access to AWS. So for example, if you want to run a command from the AWS command line interface through your terminal, you need to first provide it with your access keys and your secret access keys. That's the way that AWS knows that you're authenticated and authorized to perform the action that you're trying to perform. Now you also use your access keys when you are doing programmatic access through software applications that you write. Now the problem with this is that a lot of people will take these access keys and hard code them into their software application. So for example, when you create a DynamoDB client and you want to interact with DynamoDB through your software, you need to provide it with your access keys, right? And a lot of people just hard code that directly into the client instantiation. Now that in itself isn't a bad thing, but what ends up happening is that the same people will upload their code to publicly available source control services like GitHub or many other ones. And I'll tell you right now, there are scripts out there, programs out there that constantly scrape the commit history of every public repository looking for the keywords, secret key, access key, all that kind of stuff. And I guarantee you that if you accidentally publish this stuff to source control, pretty much immediately you're going to have someone or some script or something running on your AWS account that you didn't necessarily authorize. I don't know what these people do this for, probably like for mining Bitcoin or like doing some stuff uh, just to be malicious. But really, you do not want to find yourself in this situation. It's just going to cause you a ton of headaches. Uh, so what you really should do is from the software perspective, if you're writing an application, use environment variables so that you don't need to provide uh, your access keys directly into your code. You don't need to hard code them. You can just reference them from your environment variables. So my last tip for you is to understand what's included in the free tier. Now, this isn't necessarily like a protection of your AWS account, so it kind of goes against the grain of the, of the previous four tips, but it's also important to know just so that you don't get burned by some unexpected costs. Now, for those of you that are, are newer, um, if you're just starting out with AWS, for your first 12 months, you get access to what's called the free tier. And the free tier gives you basically credits or freebies to play with AWS resources and services to tinker with them and try them out. So for example, if you're, you're just getting started, um, you can use S3's free tier. You can upload up to five gigabytes of data and have like a couple thousand get and put requests that are absolutely free for you to use. Uh, and you're not going to get charged for that. Keep in mind that the free tier is only applicable for the first 12 months of the AWS account. So after that, you're going to be just charged the standard rates for whatever you're trying to do. Now, this is a great opportunity to try things out, but not all things, not everything is included in the free tier. So before you go ahead and try to tinker with a service or, you know, create a cloud formation based application, just be aware of what's included in that free tier so that you don't get uh, tacked with any unexpected bills. Now, this goes directly back into tip number one. If you do find yourself in an unfortunate position where you have something that, you know, you spun up, you didn't realize there was a cost for it. If you have billing alerts configured, you're going to get notified right away. You're going to be able to fix that right away as well so that you don't get any more surprises. So these are my top five tips to protect your account. I hope you enjoyed the video and don't forget to like and subscribe.